Coming up on Juice and Java, it's Clemson game day here in Syracuse. Our very own Riley Underwood is going to give us a rundown of Alumni Weekend with a very special guest. And our Coley Goldberg, he's in studio and will break down all things spooky season. And Nicole and I go apple picking at Beacon Skin. Honoring our favorite Juice and Java fall tradition. Juice and Java starts right, right now. now. morning on this game day. I'm Nicola Ponte. And I'm Alana Epstein. Thanks for starting your morning with us. Let's kick things off with a squeeze. Starting off, today is the big day, SU and Clemson face off in the Dome. The Orange are going 4-0 against a team they haven't won against since 2017. Well, last year, the Orange went up against Clemson undefeated with six wins, but lost by just six points. But it's homecoming for Syracuse, and anything can happen. Look, my fingers are crossed. Kickoff is scheduled at noon. Look, I love Clemson and Cuse game day. Look, I'm no football fan, but I feel like everyone gets really involved in the football culture here. Just walking to the studio this morning, everyone was outside just getting ready for this game. It's definitely one of the biggest games we've had this season. Oh, for sure. And we're undefeated. So we're undefeated. So hopefully Syracuse pull through. We got this. <laughs> Citrus TV's Jesse Cook is live from the quad to tell us more about today's game. Jesse? Hey, Alana. Hey, Nicole. It's pretty quiet right now outside of the dome, but that's because there's still a long way until kickoff, just about three hours. Still, the, the quad is starting to pack in. This is sort of a last hurrah for Syracuse because the Orange won't be home for the next month. This is the last time before November 3rd that Syracuse will have a home football game, the next three coming on the road with a bye week mixed in as well. And Syracuse and Clemson is somewhat of a storied rivalry over the last few years. Syracuse has not beaten Clemson since 2017. That great Eric Dungy performance when he threw three touchdowns, almost 300 yards, and Syracuse rushed the field at the end. That was a fun atmosphere. This one might be equally as exciting. Clemson is not good right now. Only two and two. The Orange, four and zero. Oh. So they might have the Tigers number. But I'll tell you what's even more exciting going on throughout the day. Live Q's countdown will be right here outside the dome. And if we go over here, you'll see them setting up behind me. The Syracuse football game will have a full production staff from Citrus TV. There's the crew. They're having a good time and they'll get going in about an hour and a half. But I won't be right here during that hour and a half. I'll be out there. I'll be live on the quad throughout all of Q's countdown for that live show. But you know who will be right here? Our three hosts, Ethan Frank, Ben Spector, and Austin Barrick. And those guys will do a great job. Ben Spector, like me, does a lot of work with On the Bench, but he used to be a Q's countdown regular host. Uh, Austin Barrick, Ethan Frank, both of them regularly on CC. It'll be a fun crew. Big thanks to Audrey Glenn, the executive producer of Q's Countdown, because this takes a lot of work to set up. And it's Citrus TV programming that is easily one of the most watched shows all year. So if you're not satisfied with one of the most watched football games at SU all season long, make sure you tune in as well for the most watched show. Jesse, thanks so much. Should be a great show. Great show. Well, October marks LGBTQ History Month. Here on campus, there are many events that will give us an opportunity for all of us to learn and celebrate the history of the LGBTQ community. Well, SU will hold events throughout the month, starting with LGBTQ across the world, celebrating queer communities around the globe on October 6th. The following week, we'll see National Coming Out Day celebrated with a Chalk on the Quad event. And the celebrations will culminate in the Hollow Queen Ball on Saturday, October 21st. The university's official kickoff for the month will be Monday, October 2nd. The Syracuse University Department of Drama is kicking off the season with the classical Broadway Guys and Dolls with over a week of nightly shows starting next Friday and continuing through the 15th. 
The show director brings a twist to the traditional story by changing the plot to take place in the current day. He says, quote, what a better way to do it than bring in the lens of someone from today because it only adds to the story and doesn't take away from it. Student tickets are $15 and are available for purchase for the College of Visual and Performing Arts website. And the Syracuse Inner Harbor Festival started yesterday and continues through the weekend. The festival is just a half mile from downtown Syracuse and hosts a variety of events every month. Well, the main event for the three-day festival was the Dragon Boat Races that took place last night to benefit Clear Path for the Veterans. This organization is a community-based nonprofit that provides support to veterans and their families. The Inner Harbor Fest will continue until tonight at 10 o'clock and all day tomorrow from 11 a.m. until 7 p.m. I think this is absolutely fantastic. Look, just a mile from downtown, it's close to campus. It's so close to campus. It's downtown by the water. I think it's so great for veterans and their families, and I think I think we should check it out. Oh, for sure. Two more days left, but also that dragon boat race. Sounds amazing. Oh, please. We, we Imagine should. us in like a little dragon boat like that. That would be so much <laughs> so fun. fun. Oh, please. Let's loop in the other Juice and Java hosts, too. The whole crew. The entire we'll crew. Everyone Dorothy down. Sabo is going to be the Dragon Boat Race later on today. Well, <laughs> Syracuse University Libraries is adding two new wellness rooms to Bird Library starting tomorrow. A massage chair room and a meditation room will be available for reservations for free. The massage chair room can be booked for a half an hour at a time and offers a full body massage chair. The meditation room offers space for meditation or yoga and has a salt lamp and crystals. Well, I need this when I go study in Bird Library. Well, the library kids have... Uh, things like yoga mats, sound machines, and light therapy boxes. Reservations for both wellness rooms can be made for the library's website. Syracuse University School of Education has been given a $3.7 million grant from the federal government to prepare a new generation of leaders in special education. SU will be partnering with Rowan University and the University of New Mexico for Project Immerse to address current need for special education teachers nationwide. Participants in this program will gain knowledge in inclusive and effective educational practices. The goal is to improve outcomes for diverse students with disabilities. The project will allow students to conduct research into special education in high-need communities. The university has announced the opening of a new Center for Gravitational Wave Astronomy and Astrophysics. The field-leading center follows huge success achieved by Syracuse University in astronomy research following the 2015 discovery of gravitational waves from colliding black holes. Well, Professor Stefan Balmer will serve as the first director of the center because of the integral role that he played in the 2015 discovery. That grand opening is October 13th with a complete reception in the University Physics Building. New York City saw heavy rain yesterday, which left many parts of the city flooded. At least 13 people in the city died as cars and several buses were trapped in the water. Up to 2.5 inches of rain per hour were reported in some parts of the city, and subways, rail lines, and air travel was also suspended. Governor Kathy Hochul issued a state of emergency for New York City, Long Island, and Hudson Valley. According to the National Weather Service, more than eight inches of rain fell at JFK Airport. Luckily, the state of emergency was removed and the airport reopened last night. It's devastating. I know it's where oh we're from gosh. to see all of this happen. So it was it was crazy to see those familiar roads. Oh, it was absolutely nuts. Like we're both from there. Hopefully everyone is preparing from everything or, you know, repairing from everything that they went through yesterday. But what's going on right now here in Syracuse? Our Cora Marie Costa. Cora, what's going on? Well, over here in Syracuse, we'll, you will not be seeing those kinds of torrential rains. It'll stay around 55 degrees, and it's such a beautiful day. I mean, on the way to the station, I couldn't help but notice how sunny it was, how beautiful. Low winds, so I stayed pretty chill today. And now let's look at the five-day forecast. Now, today's game day, and luckily for all of us, it's going to go to a high of 74 as the game starts. So definitely want to get out during that. And it's super important to drink lots of water, but you'll see that in my next slide it's going to be sunny throughout the week again no rain so just enjoy the day go out on the quad spend some time with your friends and just feel free to throw a frisbee around i mean i know i'll do that tuesday wednesdays are going to be so clear so definitely those are the days you're going to want to get out right after your classes now looking at your game day guide 
No umbrellas. Don't even think about it. It's going to be beautiful out. No reason to do that. Wear your Q's best. Now, wear any game day merch you have. I know a lot of people in studio, Alana and Nicole, have their Q's colors on right now. I personally am wearing orange right now. Make sure you drink lots of water. It's going to be super hot today. Almost going to reach 80 degrees. Just be safe. Drink a ton of water and so you can enjoy the game for what it is. But that's all the time I have for you right now. Stay tuned. Nicole and Alana, back to you guys. Thanks so much, Gora. Well, coming up after the break, it's Alumni Weekend. We spoke with some QS alum who are excited to be back on campus. You might even recognize one of them. Stay with us. And we enjoy that game. QS Countdown is live. We welcome you to a live edition of QS Countdown. Brand new year, time to right the wrong. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you eat stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK, but remember, it's not what you say. It's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Juice and Java. Former students are returning to campus this weekend for Orange Central and Alumni Weekend. Well, it's a chance for everyone to reconnect with their alma mater. Our Riley Underwood is in studio. Riley, what can you tell us about Alumni Weekend, Orange Central? Yeah, good morning, guys. Well, Orange Central is currently in progress and it's better known as Alumni Weekend, where all the alumni are coming back. The festivities started on Thursday and are going all the way through Sunday. Currently, many school-specific breakfasts are taking place around campus. And then other events happening today and tomorrow include campus tours and even brunch with Jim Beheim tomorrow. The main event for the weekend, of course, is the orange, the undefeated orange taken on the Clemson Tigers in the Dome. Citrus TV has also produced many successful alumni, and I even got the chance to talk to one former Syracuse student and Juice and Java host about the impact Syracuse made on him. We, me and a couple of my friends have tried to schedule a weekend where we can all go to campus together, and everyone has life, like life, career, stuff like that. It's hard to get everyone on the same page. Um, so Q's having alumni weekend and having like that one set of days that everyone can come down is great because Juice and Java my senior year was like the highlight of those eight months. Uh, it never felt like work and that's the best part about Citrus. There are times where Citrus can feel like a grind. Juice and Java was never a grind. It was uh, a community of great people producing great television. Uh, this year alone, I've had the privilege of, of talking with Scarlett Johansson, Dave Bautista, uh, Nicholas Cage. It's very humbling to like think back to like when those things were just an idea uh, at Juice and Java uh, and, and just Citrus in general of like having these big aspirations and then realizing how quickly they can be attained um, in the real world. 
Yeah, the Orange Central Alumni Tailgate starts today in just under an hour on the quad, and the $20 admission covers food and two drink tickets. Thanks, Riley. Coming up, spooky season is around the corner. We'll have a full breakdown of all the horror movies headed to the big screen. Stay with us. Pants peanut butter? A big screen television? You haven't even bought a sofa yet. A motorcycle? When your father finds out, he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles? What do you even need two buckles for? Mr. Big Shot, buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar. From the looks of it, I'd say nobody even remembers. Feed the pig. Adventure can be found anywhere, but the best place to start is in the forest. I spy something beginning with S. Snow? No. Snow-covered trees? Nothing to do with snow. Head outside to discover incredible animals <laughs> and beautiful plants that come together to create an unforgettable adventure. Wow. So grab your loved ones. Don't even. And explore a world of possibilities. Come on, this way. Visit discovertheforest.org to find the closest forest or park to you. You've messed up your son's haircut. Mom? Do you A, try to fix it? Like it never happened. B, work with what you got. Or C, show solidarity. Thank you, babe. As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you. Welcome back to Juice and Java. With September coming to an end, fall continues to progress, and that means only one thing, it's spooky season. Here to fill us in on all the horror movies releasing soon is our entertainment correspondent, Charlie Goldberg. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk some horror movies. So, from new additions to famous franchises to a highly anticipated game coming to the big screen, this year's Halloween seems more stacked than ever when it comes to the releases of new horror movies. So what fall fright should you expect to see in a theater near you? Here are some of the most highly anticipated horror movies releasing this month. First up, Saw 10. Set between the events of Saw's 1 and 2, Tobin Bell returns to the series to reprise his legendary role as John Kramer. In this point in time, we find a terminally ill Kramer in Mexico participating in experimental surgery, hoping to get rid of a tumor. However, it turns out that this entire operation was nothing more than a sham, and that the tumor was in fact not removed. With vengeance on his mind, Kramer has one last dying wish, which is to get back at all those who were involved. Up next, Five Nights at Freddy's. This is based on the very popular video game that came out back in 2014, based around Freddy's Bad Bears Pizza, which is now back in business. Just like in the game, this plot revolves around a security guard who takes on the unenviable job of watching over an abandoned family entertainment center. This isn't your average Chuck E. Cheese's, though. As these animatronics come to life at night with murderous intentions in mind, will the guard survive? Find out later this month. Finally, let's talk about The Exorcist Believer. This is the film based around one of, if not the greatest horror movies of all time, in The Exorcist in 1973. In this film, two missing girls who have been found with no recollection of what happened to them are displaying really disturbing behavior. So, looking into that further, it turns out that they actually brought something extremely sinister back home with them. In order to stop a possession, a father of one of the girls enlists help from a familiar face from the first movie. Last week, I traveled to Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights Orlando, where this movie was displayed as one of the year's top houses. And based on what I saw from the house, I can confidently say this movie looks absolutely incredible. Nicole, Alana, you gotta love it. Okay, look, I'll be honest with you, I'm born Halloween. Like, I, I oh, birthday wow. October 31st, 
I, every single movie that you were speaking about, I'm petrified. Like, I'm so oh. scared. I just recently got into horror movies. I like them, but I haven't seen enough, so I feel like I'm gonna have to go and see all of these movies you just talked about. Yeah, a lot of them look great, but why Why do you hate Halloween so look, much? What's going I'll on there? I'll deal with the, um, like, your description of everything that happened. I cannot <laughs> even begin to, like, sit down and actually watch it. But Charlie Goldberg, thanks so much. Of course. Well, if you thought this is our last fall content of today, well, you're wrong. When we come back, Nicole and I take part in one of Juice and Java's most treasured traditions. You really don't want to miss it. You can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Central New York can only mean one thing, our annual tradition of coming to Beacon Skip every fall. It's the last weekend of September here in Central New York. I am so excited to go get some apples and get in the fall spirit. Let's go! All right, Alana, this is your first time. This is your inaugural part of being a Juice and Java host. So excited. Beacon Skip Orchard, we actually can't walk onto it. We have to go on the wagon. Excited. Let's go. We're like Gilmore Girls right now. We're like, okay. Ten rows of Cortlands here, both sides of the road. Okay, we're, we started this side earlier. Okay, this side we just started yesterday, so there's more apples up here. Oh, on this great. Side. Okay, feel free to go this way or that way, whichever way you want. But when you're done, you just have to come back to the benches up by that oh, other perfect. trash barrel, and we'll pick you up and take you back. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, so. Apple picking 101, you have to like clean it off on your jeans. Look, now it's so shiny. So since you don't have like a sink to like rinse it off, it's fine like this. Okay, so I actually don't know the last time that I've had an apple, so we're gonna try it right now. This looks really good. And I'm also a little bit superstitious about getting dirty, so I just like cleaned it off. Super easy to get it ready to go, all right? Okay, so. I'm gonna scare Alana. Like we're gonna see how about her. I don't really know where she is. I have to like peek through trees. Three, two, one. That's so good. These are the best apples. Ah! No. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not get scared? I also can't like scream loud. <laughs> Taste test. I'm gonna rate it one out of ten. It's so good. I applaud you for being a junior at Syracuse. What is an apple's favorite dance move? Our favorite song, favorite song. Apple bottom jeans. Yes! Good job! Um, all right, Alana. First, Juice and Java fall tradition here at Beacon Skip, one to 10. 15 out of 10. I had yeah. so much fun. We had such a great team here. And honestly, I got so many apples. Oh, me too. And this is so great here. We're about to try some of our favorite apple products in the studio. We'll see you right there. 
And just like that, we're in studio. We also have some of our favorite Apple products. From Beacon Skiff, we got all of this stuff. Nicole, what do you want to try first? Okay, I feel like the donuts are like the biggest. We're calling our names. Oh, They're I agree. And then like we have our little apple cider to like wash it down with, mm -hmm. and then that fudge, apple, so, apple, apple pie, pie fudge. fudge. Okay, yeah, so not so gonna I'm lie sorry. to you. This is gonna be a mess. Oh. Total mess. Or? Oh no, I'm having, <laughs> I'm having my full one a lot out. Okay, ready? Cheers. Cheers. It's fantastic. Mm, it's that's so, so good. good. Okay, so I actually bought six of these donuts like with like mm. whole with mm, me. You did, I, I saw like that. five yesterday. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. I haven't had these since last year. Amazing. Okay. Honestly. We're gonna so, make a mess, but it's okay. Um, the fudge. I'm so excited for this. Oh, yeah, like that's <laughs> this is like okay. okay. You want to cut? A piece? I don't even know how to go about this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just go, just go for it, girl. <laughs> Look, okay. You know All what? Right. Don't try this at home. It's okay. Have a nice thing to go for your fudge because we're not prepared at all. But all we're right, gonna try right? it. Three, two, one. Cheers. That's good. Okay. That's like so unique and different. Like. I've when never had, had an apple pie fudge. Never, and it's it tastes like apple pie. It's really good. Also, I love fudge. So oh, me too. Yesterday we were we were at Beacon Skiff. We're like, what fudge should we get? Apple pie. This go for it. Amazing. All right, now, now of we gotta, course, do you know they sell these in Newhouse's Cafe Food dot com? Yeah, they do. That yesterday, I'm That's, so serious. Mm -hmm. Like all my sophomore junior year, I would always get Beacon Skiff apple cider. Oh, it's from Beacon Skiff. Yes, it's from Beacon Skiff. I I'm not the biggest apple cider fan, but let's try oh. it. But now I am. That was really good. <laughs> no, that was I think really, it's great. really good. It tastes like apple juice. Look, but go well, to Beacon Skiff, get all these things. Absolutely. That was fantastic. so much fun. When we come back, we'll take a look at your wake up weather. Stay with us. Opportunity to play the Clemson Tigers, and we enjoy that game. Q's Countdown is live. We welcome you to a live edition of Q's Countdown. Brand new year, time to right the wrong. Well, speaking of all those apples, you're gonna need to dust off your apple bottom jeans because as we look into the weather tomorrow, <laughs> it's supposed to be wonderful. I mean, it's supposed to, by noon, reach almost 80 degrees. It's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at that. Granted, night, it gets chillier, but again, moderate winds, not more than eight miles per hour, and the skies will be so clear. So if you wanna go sky, not skydiving, but if you wanna go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, why not? This, it'll be clear enough for it, but here's my question of the day. Let's right. do a little fall trivia. I'm ready. All right, so in how many weeks will the leaves start to change color completely? Now completely, just like that picture of Syracuse. I'm gonna give it three weeks. C. Three I'm, weeks? I'm gonna go with C. B. I'm gonna go with B because I Two already weeks. see I already see the leaves changing colors now. Okay, locking it in? I'm locking, locking it, it in. in. All right, well, the answer is three weeks. Nicole, Nicole got yes. the points today. Yes, yes. yes. perfect. perfect. Oh, I'm so yeah. happy. That's fantastic. I can't wait. I can't wait. No, to me too. I mean, I... the humidity will lead to leaves finally changing color, and I can't wait till that comes. Oh, me too. I can't wait either. Well, thank you so much, Cora. And well, as we enter the fall season, we know how cold it can get in Syracuse. We asked the Juice and Java crew to see when they think the first snowfall of the year will happen. All right, let's see these results. I'm excited because I've seen all of these uh, 
like the snowfall have oh have gosh. come in like yeah. the weirdest times ever. All right, All right, two weeks, six weeks. That's, the winner, that's the winner fair. Is six weeks. That's fair though. I yeah. look. I love this like little poll. Asked by Dorothy Saba, our wonderful, one of our wonderful co EPs. We love our group. When are you? When are you voting? Two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, or eight weeks? I'm a six weeks fan. Yeah, me too. I feel like you're right. You're I, a weather anchor. You yeah, I'm the weather. Like, you're the weather anchor. You know. I trust you, Cora. I trust you. I know you. the general trends, and the trends are telling me that it's the end of October where it's going to start to snow. So you get know, ready for that. I've seen snow. This is not even in the fall at all. In the spring. I saw snow in April, my sophomore year. Absolutely oh my, awful. I, Hopefully, oh it's going to go till oh, at least oh, March. Till oh, yeah. Absolutely March. Great. Well, yeah. that's all the time we have for Juice and Java this morning. Check us out online at CitrusTV.com and follow Citrus TV on Facebook, X, and Instagram. I'm Alana Epstein. I'm Paula Ponte. Have a great morning and go Cues.